Hey guys, it's Antiquated Ideas, and today I wanted to make a video that, I mean, I guess I thought I wouldn't have to, but also I feel it's important. I mean, needless to say, or rather not so needless, I didn't think I would have to comment as much as I feel that I should. Yet, I see so many people on so many different ends of the political spectrum calling for violence. There are leftists like the Antifa bike lock guy who literally bashed someone's head in, who openly call for violence and doxing, despite saying that they're for equality and peace. And conversely, there are right-wingers who say there shouldn't even be blacks in America and that we can just remove them all forcefully. People who also openly advocate for violence. I'll be frank with you guys. This is not my standpoint. I'm not just saying that so I can seem like the good guy. It's a legitimate problem with the community. A lot of other nationalists are closely tied with fascism or are just downright violent. I mean, fascism doesn't need to be violent, I should add. This is my point. Violence is a tool. So, let me expand on that. Any good farmer, frontiersman, or hunter knows that violence is an essential part of life. The act of taking an animal's life is inherently violent. Of course, a discussion for another day is the whole concept of violence, but we can easily see that violence does not always equate to malevolence. The reason I see violence as a tool is because it is most directly comparable to a tool. I mean, a tool is meant to be used in the appropriate manner and is not a toy and it should not be used as a toy. I mean, that's the... that's what any good father, uncle, tradesman, anything, whenever you're learning how to use a tool, they'll always tell you it's a tool, not a toy. Take, for instance, a kitchen knife. A kitchen knife can be used as a weapon, but that isn't its intended purpose. It's meant to cut foods up and it does that job very efficiently because it's being used for what it's intended. Consequently, though, it would also be very good at slashing or cutting anyone, not just your food. So, I see violence in the same way, where Violence is to be used only for survival, only when it's needed and has the appropriate purpose. I mean, there's a time and a place. And survival, though, it does constitute protecting yourself, others, and your rights. It doesn't matter who from, because sometimes people that appear to be friendly turn out to be quite the opposite. <clears throat> the institutions we set up to protect us can be used against us. I mean, I just made a video about that. So yes, you should be prepared to use violence, but only if absolutely necessary. Being happy to use violence is an issue in and of itself. Uh, we must be able to look at it and understand that, again, it's supposed to be used where absolutely necessary. I see far too many people who are not just advocating, but they're pushing for violence. They're happy for it. But also... Many people don't know the reality of what their actions might bring. Uh, I mean, everyone's gung-ho and ready to go to war until the killing actually starts happening. Then it sets in.
Then the reality of your actions, the consequences of your actions, set in. That doesn't mean that you need to feel shame in defending yourself, but you should feel shame if your aim is specifically to provoke violence or killing. Our culture today is built on various forms of degradation. Violence and gore is all too common in our movies and games and shows, and it desensitizes us to a reality. The reality is that peace should be preserved. There is a fine balance. That's why sacrificing animals was a religious act. Taking anything's life should be done with respect. I mean, that goes for respecting the food that you have, even if it's not from an animal. You know, you have to understand that when you grow a crop, it's also alive, and you have to take its life. It's the same as when you kill an animal for food, and it's the same if you have to defend yourself. You have to know what you're doing, and you have to respect it. Taking something's life just because you can is wrong, or just because you're letting emotion take control. Find the balance. Know the limits. Yes, there is a stopping point. The threshold that sometimes needs to be crossed where you actively need to use violence to defend yourself or someone else. But that's it. I do not condone violence outside of that. If it can be done peacefully, you know, the worst that can happen is you try. You owe it not just to yourself and to God, but you owe it to everyone in this movement and everyone outside of it who doesn't want to be hurt. So, the next time you go and sit there like a keyboard warrior and say that, you know, these people should be killed or you wish you could be doing this or that, think about the reality of what you're saying, what it, it, what it attracts to you, and what you're putting out there. Do you really want to be seen as somebody with no heart? I don't think that a lot of people want to be seen as that. So, I just want you to think about that. Think about alternatives to violence. 